How can we implement upsell and cross-sell offers using ScreenFlows? Using ScreenFlow functionality, I can present on the Lightning Record page an offer that I can actually modify based on each client uh, that the user can present to the client when they are talking to them face-to-face -face or uh, over the phone. And I can even hide that offer screen, offer component, uh, when the segment that the client is in is not a segment that I'm targeting. So please follow the presentation and see how you can use screen flows to implement upsell cross sell functionality right inside Salesforce. Enjoy. I'm very happy to be here with you tonight and uh, we are going to go over last time we did this for San Francisco. We went over uh, record triggered flows and their similarities and differences to workflow rules and process builders. And tonight we are going to be doing screen flows. Uh, I'm Andy Utkan and uh, I am 11 times certified on the platform. I'm a ranger. And uh, uh, the last one, the last certification I, I acquired, I got was uh, application architect. Uh, I love teaching flows on the Salesforce platform. I have a YouTube channel, a Udemy class, uh, a Twitter account where I answer questions. And also I started a, a Slack workspace where I uh, help people with their flow problems once they get stuck. I'm going to drop all the links here into the chat. So uh, go ahead and add. If you click on the YouTube channel, you are going to have uh, me autoplay and uh, don't get surprised. So you might hear me twice. <laughs> so uh, are we are we recording now? Yes, we are. Awesome. Okay, let me just share. Uh, I think we stopped the recording. Are, are we sure we're recording right now? Uh, yes. Yeah, I, I, see the, I, I, I see the recording button on. Right, in the upper left-hand corner. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Just sorry okay. about that. Okay, so let me just share the screen. So the use case we have today, let me make the fonts a little bit bigger. You, you can see that, right? Yes. yes. All right. So the use case we have today, let's imagine we are a company that provides fleet management services, vehicles for other businesses, right? And we have a Salesforce org uh, where we have all of our accounts and we service our clients. And we have a client called Dent Recycling Management, and this is an account, right? So we want to provide them uh, an upsell offer. We want to give them an offer when they call us or we, we are on the phone with them. Uh, and for that, we can use Flow to guide our employees, our team members uh, through the offer so that they can create an opportunity. This is what you see on the right side over here, right? Let me take the full screen with that. So you see an image of a Mercedes, right? So this is the Mercedes that uh, we saw at Dreamforce. Apparently they were doing a co-marketing with Salesforce and they, they were also sharing success stories on the Salesforce platform. So that's why I used it, this example. This Demonstration is by no means sponsored either by Salesforce or Mercedes. <laughs> so uh, what you would do is actually when you see this over here as an employee, as a salesperson or customer service person who is authorized to give an offer to the client, uh, you will read the offer. I, I didn't put anything here uh, that actually details out the offer, but I could have actually pasted text in here that would guide the person through the whole offer and, you know, make sure that that person doesn't leave out any details when, you know, going through the script, let's say. And then once they click next, they are going to be sent to another screen that uh, shows the offer details and that allows them to make, make changes on the uh, offer. 
to create an opportunity. So what we see over here is there is an automatically generated opportunity name. And it looks like the account name plus uh, the Mercedes purchase opportunity and then, you know, the date and time. And we are able to select a packet choice. Not much detail is provided here, but for the dem demonstration purposes, either or A or B. And, um, and the close date is pre-filled and we can select another close date if we want to. And then you see that functionality actually came and it is classified as beta for now. Uh, we can rename the buttons now. So the, the, button, the button here says, let's go, all right? And once we do that, and what I usually do is I have a success screen that'll say, you know, your transaction recorded successfully. I didn't see that, but I didn't also get an error message. This is going to recycle back to the initial screen unless I provide a message on that screen. And if I go to the related list of the opportunity now, I'm going to see under opportunities, I have uh, an opportunity titled Dent Recycling Management Mercedes Purchase Opportunity. And the opportunity amount is 60, uh, thousand no it the opportunity amount is eighty thousand dollars the close date is the close date that was assigned by default we didn't change it and the stages proposal price quote so now we're gonna see how to do that right so I usually take a little bit longer than an hour to build through these so this is going to be my challenge today so let's see if we can build that together So this is what the flow looks like, but let's do it all over again. And as always, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to interrupt me, okay? So we are going to click on new flow and we are going to select screen flow here. Whenever we have any kind of interaction with the user, displaying a message, whether it's static message or variable information, or having them fill out uh, fields, inputs, we have to use screen flow. None of the other flow types have screen interaction. So I'm going to choose auto layout. I can do either auto layout or freeform. So whenever we work with screen flows, um, if we are going to relate the screen flow uh, to, to an existing record in any kind of way or fashion, we need to create a variable. And the variable we create for record ID is going to be type text. And we are going to mark this available for input. What this does for us is when we debug our flow, uh, the flow is going to ask us this information or we are able to pass the record ID to this flow uh, uh, via various different methods. And, you know, one of the methods is going to be the lightning uh, record page that we just saw. So once we define that variable, uh, the variable is simply a container that holds a value for me to use later in my flow. So this is going to be, in this case, the account ID that is going to be uh, for the record that I see on my screen. And to access the account ID fields, because my screen flow is not like a record triggered flow. It doesn't know what record I am on. I just told the flow I'm, I want to use record ID, but I still need to get my field values from the account. So here I'm going to do my query, SQL query. Uh, that's what, what uh, I mean. Inside flow is called get, and I'm going to get the account that has the account ID that equals to the record ID I'm going to give to the flow. And I want to get only the first record, automatically store all the fields. I don't need sorting or anything like that. I know that this record is going to be existing, an existing record. So I don't really expect an error message here or, or, or 
a fault here uh, because uh, I am going to launch this off of the record that's on the screen. So my first screen is going to be, let's call this one. When I open my screen element, the first thing I do usually is I hide the header because the header shows the flow name and it's usually an ugly name that the user doesn't need to see. I drop in a display text component. Now let me just first name my screen, call this initial screen. That's the name of my screen element. And then the display text part is going to be initial header text. And here, this is a rich text area where I can type um, things like client offer. And it's rich text, so I can use bold. I can define the size of the font, right? So that's what I use for a header on my screen. And I can, in this case, I'm ju just going to drop the image in here. I could actually drop in a couple of display text components here, but that's not necessary. Here I have the attach image functionality and I can drop in an image there. Let's, let's use a different image, right? This is a nice image too. So, and again, I'm going to start typing the details of the offer here. Let's say, and click next to continue. Now here I get the functionality to make things in italic, change the color, I can make it red. I can do whatever I want with it. This is my playground, right? Uh, does anybody care naming our button? You wanna you wanna give it a special name? Any any uh, preferences here? Nope. How about nope. the the usual next? Next. Uh, well, like, let's get creative. Show me the money, right? <laughs> or show me the car. Yeah. Okay. So. So that is going to be our button here. I can click on done. Let me go ahead and get, in, get into the habit of saving quick, right? You know, you don't want to lose stuff. Unless you add an element to your flow, you can't really save it initially. That's, that's the interesting part about flows. But uh, you want to name your flow something like... Um, Upsell account screen flow or you know something like that. So save. And then we want to go next to another screen that will be for um, the offer details. So for that one, Again, I'm going to drop in a display text, and then this is going to be the details text. This, again, insert a title. I usually forget this one, and then it gives me an error message. Let's name our screen element. Um, for details. And here I'm going to start dropping in some input components. Now, here's the important part. Your screen flow does not know about your fields on your object. So what you are doing here is you are actually dropping in components for text input or currency input, date input. And these values need to be transferred to the field. So this 
if you're, for example, uh, working with the opportunity name, you should know that it's a text uh, field and you should enter here a text component, add a text component, and then pass that value to your opportunity name. Let's require that one. Now here's the interesting part. I can actually write in a default value and this could be apples, oranges, whatever. It doesn't matter. I can start typing or I can create a formula. Whenever you want to compute something and then present here, you want to create a formula resource. And I'm going to call this one name formula resource. And here I can construct the formula and for that, I am going to use the account name from the get account step. Now the get account step automatically created uh, a record variable for me. Record variable is a big container that holds all the field values for that record. And I can refer to it by starting, uh, by, by typing get. Uh, I can start typing get and it will show me if, you, if I have multiple here, but you know, it's just presented right here. I can just use this or start typing get. And I need to drill down and see all the field values. And if I scroll down, I'm going to see the account name here. And I can click on that and use that, get account name. And the way we put the strings together, variable strings and static string, strings is we can use the end and say Mercedes opportunity. I want to make the name unique, which is not really a requirement of the system, uh, but that's my preference. So I am going to insert also date and time, stamp it with date and time. And the way I do that, there are some global variable values that I can use inside my flow, and they are accumulated mostly under dollar flow. And under dollar flow, I have a current date and time. So this is the current date and time of when the flow executes. So I can use that to combine this. I got to obviously call this text. Say done. Now, uh, the... Interesting thing about the formula that are inside flow is you, you want to save your flow to be able to see whether you're going to have a formula error or not. Before that, you don't know whether you have a formula error. Um, unfortunately, you, have, you don't get a checker like uh, the, the field formula editor. So save here just to make sure. And then look, my name formula has an error incorrect parameter. I missed something there. Let me just go back. So what I'm doing is, and this is my string and flow can I get account name and versus and hmm. That is strange. I don't really see a problem. Does anybody see a problem? Anyway, you need to put parentheses the, around the. Well, it really shouldn't matter. Oh, of course, of course. No, no. You know what it is? Flow current date and time is of type date and time. I have to convert it to text to be able to insert it inside the text formula. So. Convert date and time to text, and you should be fine. And this is how uh, flows work, by the way, folks. I mean, they get messy. You have error messages. You got to go back and try different things and not get frustrated. I just did this like an hour ago to prepare for this session. I still can't remember. Imagine. So now here... So now our default value is a name formula, right? What else did we have here? We had the close date and we had the pick lists. Yeah, I wanna show you how choices work because that's very important, pick lists. 
So now pick list, package. I can require this one for the, I'm going to either choose pick list or radio, but let's do this one different. Let's make this a radio button. And then for the choices, I need to create choice uh, resources. So I'm going to call this one choice A. And a text value A. And I'm going to add another value called choice B. I'm going a little bit quick because I want to run out of time. Uh, but if you have any questions, please stop me, right? I will stop and address those. So choice A and choice B, we don't really have a default value. And then we had a close date. So date, drop that one in, close date. And then here I can also do a default value. And this is going to be a simpler one. It's gonna be uh, close in 30 days, right? So, and this is going to be a formula of date. And we are going to insert the flow current date and then add 30 days to it. We can do that. Let's see if that saves okay. So far, so good. Did we forget anything in there? While checking this, I think we're good. So now, because we have a choice element, I want to also show you how decisions work, right? Here is a decision. So what package would be decision here? And the first choice will be A. And here, what you want to be checking for is your choice element that you have entered. entered. Uh, it's, a, it's a package, and you'll see that it is marked as a radio button. And if it was a pick list, it was going to say pick list. So you are looking for the resource under screen component, because whenever I insert a screen component and set it up, it kind of creates automatically a variable as well, which holds the value of that component. So this is pointing to what the user selected for that choice component. So if package equals, and here is the tricky part, you don't want to be selecting these choices. You're just going to, because I define those choices as text and the value it holds is A, uh, it's going to assign, uh, the user is going to assign the text value A to this screen element. So I can just type that. And here I'm going to say B, and again, um, what was that package? Package equals B. Now I should never hit the default here, it, so it kind of doesn't matter. Um, so I'm going to address these paths over here for now. I mean, we're just going to ignore this one. We'll, we'll never get there. So now I need an assignment step. I want to assign the opportunity amount based on the choice, the packet choice. So I need an assignment element. Assign amount. And this is going to be um, and here I need to create a resource, which is just a variable that's going to hold the opportunity amount, depending on my choice and the package. And this is going to be type currency. I don't need any digits after the decimal. And the opportunity amount is going to equal if the package is A, $60,000. And I can copy this element, add it here, paste, 
Let me just rename this one. And this one is going to read assign amount to. And the opportunity amount is going to be for package B, $80,000. Now, the step that I have left here is I want to create the opportunity. How do I create the opportunity with the create element? So I will say create opportunity one, and I'm going to use separate resources. I'm going to assign the field values one by one. The first step I want to do here is I want to associate the opportunity with the account first. So the account ID field needs to be equal to the record ID because I am on that account record right now. That's where I'm creating the opportunity from. So record ID is holding the account ID. I want to pass that into the account ID of the opportunity record that I'm creating. And then I want to probably assign stage. For stage, you know, I already talked to the client. So let's say we are at proposal price quote stage. And the close date is going to be um, the close date of the screen component. We did assign a formula value to it, but we allowed, allowed the user to change it. So we, we want to use the screen component here to make sure that we capture whatever change they input on the screen. And here for the opportunity name, I want to again use the opportunity name that comes from the screen components section. And that should do it. And let me just go back. And let me turn off here the automatic, uh, the auto layout format, and then take this, just in case, take this default outcome and delete it. So that if for any case, we don't have a match for A or B, it doesn't create the record. It just bypasses the whole thing. I can, you can see that I can also go back to the auto layout after I make, make the corrections. So this is, this is a better approach just in case we did something wrong and we go through default. Uh, we can see what is happening. So now we have done all that. Any questions? Yeah, Andy, a quick question. I don't know if it's a quick question or not, not but so for a sign amount, um, can you integrate that with like maybe like a price book or anything? Do you know if, if it's... Um, can you yeah, well, yeah, I've done that before. So if you want to if you want to create an opportunity that relates to uh, a product that exists uh, with a product, uh, with the price book entry and whatever, you can do all that. It just... Uh, is going to require multiple screens where you go through which price book, right? You'll select, you'll have the user select the price book and then you'll get all the choices. And the way I've done that before is I, I um, presented to the user a text input area where I said, please enter a partial or full product name or product code. And then I will use that in my get step to get a narrowed down list of whatever product they are searching for. And then they can select and they can start adding those products. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's possible. That's, that's obviously a much uh, more involved and sophisticated flow. Cool. Thank you. Of course, no problem here. So now this was called upsell account screen flow version one. Let's activate this one. Let's debug it first, right? Let's debug it. And we were on Dent Recycling Management. The way we can debug it, we want to grab the account ID from here, from the browser, and start debug. And the first thing I'm going to see is it's going to ask me, what's record ID? And I need to pass the record ID to the debug. And then now I see this beautiful picture of the Mercedes. We saw at Dreamforce that we couldn't even get into to see what it was like. So you see the button here, show me the money. So you click on that, show me the money. And then you see the dent recycling management Mercedes opportunity pre-fills. We never changed this one before. Let's try that. Um, let's call this BMW, see what happens. 
And then we are going to select the package A and the close date. I'm going to change that one to, let's say, December 31st. Next. And it looks like I didn't experience any error messages. Now I'm going to look on my debug details and see my create uh, step has the right values, December 31st, then recycling BMW, proposal price quote, and then the result is a record has been created. This is the record ID of the new record. So the transaction committed. Uh, with ScreenFlow debug, we don't really get a rollback option. So if you're doing this in production, you've already created the record. That's important thing to know, right? So, so you can go to the related opportunities here and you'll see that the BMW opportunity has been created here. Now, the one thing that we have not done is we have not inserted the new flow onto our account page layout. I, we have the new, we have the old one, the one that I've shown you. So the way you do that is, let's see if our flow is active. If you wanna drop that onto a lightning uh, record page, you have to have an active screen flow that would show up over here as a choice. So let's go to edit page. And I am going to do that from scratch so that you'll see, I'm gonna remove this component. So this is what you usually see, right? You have um, hmm, a component error and secured. That's very interesting. I don't know where that came from. I'm not gonna worry about that. Now, if I can ignore it. So, so this is what you usually see on your standard developer org when you get started or on a standard org when you spin it. And these are the components that you can use on your left side. And there is one that says flow. So you can drop this one in an area over here. You can drop it as a separate tab in a different tab. It can be actually in the background doesn't have to be on the default tab. So, and when you drop this component, it's going to ask you for some silly reason, it actually prefills with the first uh, active screen flow in the alphabet sequence. I think it's really, really weird, but you'll just select, uh, I think this is the one, the one without SF that we have created. You're gonna select the active screen flow that you have. And it used to be, depending on how you deployed your screen flow, like if you want to start it with, a, with an action button or something like that, quick action button, then you have to name your variable record ID. This, this is the naming convention that we, we've, got, we've gotten accustomed to use because we didn't really have this dialogue before. Now we don't really have to name it record ID. I could have named it account ID for this kind of uh, deployment and launch. Because I can actually click this here. This is going to give me the correct syntax. And before this was available, I had to remember this syntax as well. Uh, to pass the record ID of the screen into the record ID of the flow. Right? So this is this that match. You have to have that. And then save. And now go back to see if I have it working. So now we have the beautiful Mercedes in the other picture. And that's what we wanted to see. Show me the money. And then this time I'm going to select B. I'm going to call it Acme Nice Mercedes Opportunity. And let's have the close date December 15. Next. And it is going to cycle back to where it was. But in my related lists of opportunities, I should be able to see this opportunity of nice Mercedes with the December 15th close date. Now the amount didn't assign though. So I've done something wrong there. I think I saw another opportunity that had the amount though. Did, was there, did it- Well, that, that was from before, I think. Let's oh, that was the original one? Wait. Wait, no, this is 6 p.m. 
But I think I think this is Pacific time. Is is six is it six p.m. over there? Yeah, six yes, p.m. Yes, <laughs> yes. This throws throws me off every time. I I guess it pays to present to the Pacific folks because that that's what <laughs> at least we know the correct time. So yeah, I mean I I think I've I've done some wrong. Let's go back and address that, right? So let let's. I'm going to go back and retrace it. Uh, all right. So the amount did I am I assigning the amount? I'm not assigning the amount. I didn't do that at all. I completely omitted that step. So amount needs to equal again the amount from the screen. No, no, amount from the variable. I created a variable, a temporary container for me to hold the amount that I've selected through the decision, through the choice step. So yeah, I left this one out, save this as, as version two, and I have to activate it again. I can only have one version active, and that's the only version that this page is gonna see. So we are on the opportunity, we wanna be on the account. Let's go back to Acme and try this again. Acme. This is going to be red. Wow, I misspelled it. Let's leave it like that. So A, and this is going to be the 16th of December. And so now we have it at 60,000. That's what we wanted. We wanted 60,000. Let's do that one more time. And Show me the money, B, and let's call this one blue. And this is going to be December 17th. Related. Red. Where is my blue? Right here. And this is going to be uh, of amount of 80,000. Voila, so, folks. So, Andy, if you did the uh, one that didn't have the value, if you just said, show me the money, will it, it go ahead and populate it then? I, I mean, uh, that's the only thing. Basically, just resave it. Would they, it then the flow get fired? You mean like here? You're saying if I make a change here, you mean? Well, so you go to related, right? Yes, yes. And you know, the opportunities, the one on the far right, the nice Mercedes doesn't have an amount, right? How could I have that one populate the correct amount? Is there a way I could do that? Now uh, that you're gonna, you, now that you're you've gonna have to, it. you're gonna have to manually edit it. Okay, okay. Because uh, we are doing a screen flow. It's not really a record triggered flow. It's not okay. like, you know, I can go in here and then save it. It's going to autocorrect itself okay. because it only triggers either manually by on demand by, you know, me launching it, uh, running it in debug, for example, uh, or I need to uh, launch it on the, on the lightning page here. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Any other questions? So do we have uh, some more time? I think we have some more time, right? Yes, yes, yeah. Okay, so what I wanted to show you is what's an upsell, upsell opportunity uh, for a company that works on Salesforce if they present the upsell opportunity to every account that they have. You know, like that would be something silly. We don't really want that. So what we would want is we would want to present the upsell opportunity to only some clients. So how are you going to do that? First of all, we can actually do some decisions here to decide what opportunity, what offer we want to present to the client based on certain parameters. You know, is this a big client, small client? What industry? Is this a hot client or a cold client? You know, all kinds of stuff. So we don't really have time to do all that, but you know what we can do, which is going to be a very simple customization, we can actually use the built-in functionality we have in Lightning Record Pages 
here in my Lightning App Builder, I can I can define conditional visibility. I I just won't show this for every account. It's that simple. So what I need to add is add set component visibility, and then I'm going to base this on a record field value. And the record field value will be annual revenue. So if the account has an annual revenue that's greater than or equal $10 million, then I want to see this. If they don't have that, I don't really want to offer this at all. So on Acme, I'm not going to see this. Why? Because Acme doesn't have an annual revenue assigned. So let's try assigning annual revenue, $9 million. Again, I don't see it. Let's do $10 million. Voila, then I see it. So this is, this is a way you can customize in a very simple way. You just won't show that flow component to the user at all if you know, certain conditions don't apply. And you, know, you can actually define some sophisticated criteria there depending on several different things. It is, it is a nice feature that you can play with. Now, the one thing I will tell you, though, is it looks nice to have a picture over here. Now, you, you have to remember this flow is going to run every time this record page is pulled and presented on screen. So if I have 1,000 users across the world pulling account records like each 200 a day, this is probably not the greatest idea, right? So... Uh, what you can do for that is you can either remove the image if you're experiencing performance impacts because, you know, uh, on Lightning, this is something that we usually worry about. Or another way is you can take this one and you can, as long as you know that your users are going to be looking there, you can create a dedicated tab for it. So, for example, here, you can say, right here. And now we are going into uh, lightning functionality. And we can say, okay, I want to create a tab that's going to be upsell opportunity, right? That's going to be, let's make this as the second tab. And move it up here and save. Oh, yeah, I need to put this component over there. So, so take this one and move it over here. And it's going to display bigger too, by the way. Now I can play with two columns, three columns. That's also, also one functionality that we have in Flow that I have not shown you. With one of the recent releases, we got the functionality to add sections that can be multi-column, which is fantastic. We didn't have that before. So I can say I want to have three columns. And then I can start dropping the fields in there. Like for a more horizontal look. Whether it, it makes sense with the opportunity name is another question, but I just want to show you the functionality. All right, so we are here now. We dropped it here. We want to save and go back and see how that looks for us. 
So now with my lightning page, my browser is not really running what's in the tabs that don't show currently. So if I go here, now I'm going to be running this and it's going to show much bigger. I'm taking up the two columns of the three columns that, that are available in the lightning layout. And when I click on show me the money, you'll see that I have this horizontal lock with three columns that I can use and utilize this time. And it's actually, I mean, on my screen, at least I'm on a big screen, it actually shows fine. So any questions? Is there a limit how many columns you could put? I'm just kind of curious. Well, yeah, that's how you learn by, you know, trying and breaking things. I've never tried. Let me just try. I think three or four, probably my gut tells me, but let's try. Yeah, four. We can do four. Okay. And then uh, that's the other thing. We can play with the widths. The first one can be wider. See? It's pretty mm. cool functionality. And, you know, when trying to position fields on the screen in a more precise manner the way you want, the, the cool thing that you can do is you can leave fields, uh, you can leave columns empty. Like, for example, if you want to move this down a little bit and then say, you know, I just want to leave some space in between, you can do this. Another thing you can do is you can always drop in an image. You can drop in text that's static. That's also available. 